In this lesson, we'll continue discussing common problems in orchestration. One difficulty we see often is balance problems. While some orchestration that isn't perfect can be made to work by a good conductor, it's always better if the composer thinks out the orchestral balance as part of their job. Here's an example. Dumping a melody in the clarinet with two horns in the same register is not a good idea. Yes, the conductor could tell the horns to play very softly, but normal orchestral balance would dictate the opposite, horn accompanied by clarinets. Or compare this version, where the clarinet is accompanied by strings. Strings can easily play very softly, and there's more contrast of timbre as well, which helps to keep the planes of tone separate. Here, good balance takes no special effort. When we consider how expensive it is for an orchestra to rehearse, we realize how important it is to orchestrate in such a way that they don't need to spend time on this kind of problem. Balance is part of a larger issue in orchestration. As Donald Francis Tubby pointed out long ago, the real essence of orchestration lies in the idea of planes of tone. Foreground and background, like accompaniment, are most effective when the planes of tone are distinct. So, for example, don't do this. This is even worse than our first example, since the accompanying harmony is in the same register and the same timbre as the main line. Simply moving the first clarinet up an octave solves this. In a different register, the ear has no problem distinguishing the melody from the accompaniment. Sometimes there are more than two planes of tone. Here's a melody with accompanying harmony and background movement as well. It's essential to keep the three planes clearly distinguished from another by using appropriately chosen timbres and registers so the balance and the planes of tone emerge without any special work. This works well because the melody in the first violins is in a different register from the sustained harmony in the flutes and the pizzicato movement in the violas. The differences of timbre also help to distinguish the three planes of tone. Here's a poorly conceived version of the same music. While the oboe stands out a little bit from the flute in the same register, the accompaniment in the clarinet confuses things. Our first version works right away, with no special effort, unlike this one. Another problem you often encounter is when people simply write dynamics instead of orchestrating them, or even worse, have the orchestra doing something that actually contradicts the dynamics. Here's an example. Here the brass start the crescendo along with the first violins an octave higher. Then the upper strings and woodwinds come in at the end. But since the brass are the loudest orchestral family, having them disappear in the third bar takes a lot of the intensity out of the crescendo, just at the point where it should increase. The result is somewhat disappointing. Here's a much better version. Here, not only do the brass remain to the end, but the repeated notes in the horns in the second bar and the added third in the trumpet at the climax add intensity. The crescendo here is part of the orchestration itself. So remember, don't just write dynamics in the music, orchestrate the dynamics. Similarly, listen to the difference between these two orchestrations of the same phrase. The first one isn't bad, but the second one actually orchestrates the accent by adding the pizzicato double stop. That makes it more convincing. Two other common problems I see in beginner's work are never using single families or contrast of register in a longer work. Unfortunately, I can't give examples of these here since they would necessarily be very long. Just remember that having only one family of the orchestra playing 
for example just strings or just brass, is one of the simplest and most effective orchestral contrasts. Changes of register are also simple and very potent. These are among the reasons that Mozart's orchestration, although it usually lacks trombones and elaborate percussion, remains so fresh and effective. All of these problems result in tepid musical character rather than strong expressive gestures. <laughs>